All right, guys, it's finally here. The video you have been waiting for, how to increase your squat instantly. If you weren't aware, I'm a 415 kilogram squatter. That's 915 pounds in competition. And I'm gonna share with you the techniques that I used to build a massive squat. This is not clickbait. If you apply these techniques to your squat, you will get stronger immediately, guaranteed. Let's get it. That's very important because if you don't have the tension from the ground, you're gonna have a very hard time keeping tension throughout your body. Remember, everything is a chain and everything is connected. And if we have a weak link in that chain, well, it's not gonna be as strong. That's just facts, right? But the rule of thumb is you wanna have your hands as close as mobility will allow. Why is this? Now, the closer we can get our hands together on the barbell here, right? The more potential we have to squeeze and create a tighter upper back. Now, the upper back is the shelf for the barbell. So that's a very important factor in a squat, right? If you don't have a really strong, stable structure for the barbell to sit on, then you're already very limited, obviously, to what you're going to be able to squat. And welcome back to your mum's favorite channel on YouTube, Cult Strength. Today is indeed the day how to increase your squat instantly. Now, this is not clickbait. Now, I did uh, the same video for bench press and for deadlifts. And if you tried them, I guarantee you got results. A lot of you guys left feedback and comments letting me know how you went. So thank you for that. I'm glad it was helpful. Now, today the goal is to do exactly the same thing but with squats. It's not cool to skip leg day, okay? It's great to have a big bench and get some big pecs. It's cool to be jacked, but you gotta be able to squat too. I mean, we all know it's not cool to see someone walking around with a big upper body with no legs, all right? It ain't cool. Now today also, you may have to contest with a little bit of rain. Uh, if you can hear that, I apologize, but it shouldn't be too bad. I'll make sure I speak up though. Now, what are we gonna cover today? and how is it gonna help you? We're gonna break it down into three parts, okay? There's a, a few nuances and it's a little, maybe a little more technical than the bench press and the deadlift. Uh, so there may be a few more notes, a few more finer details, but I'll keep it as simple as I can and as digestible as I can because the point of these videos is that they can help you, okay? I'm not gonna use jargon and fancy words that you don't understand. Uh, there's no point speaking like that. It doesn't mean anything different, right? And what good am I if I have all this knowledge, but I don't know how to share that with you, okay? So you need to be able to understand it. So I'm gonna do my best today uh, to break that down for you. So the three parts we'll break it down to, we'll kind of section our body, right? The first thing we'll cover will be uh, things like our hand placement, uh, our head position, and perhaps where should the bar sit on our back? That'll be the first thing we cover. Then we'll go into more of the torso, how do, we, uh, how do we brace correctly? How do we use our belt? Um, and you know, how, do we, how do we get a nice, tight, strong upper back so we don't fold under heavy weights, okay? That'll be part two. And the third and final thing that we'll cover will be our legs and our feet. You know, our foot stance, where are our feet? Even what are we doing with our feet and how are we utilizing our quads and our glutes and our hips, okay? How to brace through the entire body to achieve a massive squat, okay? That's the goal for today. You're gonna watch this video and you're gonna go to the gym. You'll apply these relatively simple cues, okay? And you're gonna notice you have a bigger squat. That's just how it goes. So I'm excited to share that with you today. Um, I will have also a deadlift program. I know it's not squats. Dropping, I think, later this week or early next week, Deadlift Destroyer. And there'll be some merch coming soon as well. Uh, be sure to keep your eye on my website. I currently have a bench press program on there. And there will be a three lift program and a squat program coming very soon. But I think it's time that we get started. Give me a minute and we'll chat. Let's get it, baby. All right, guys, so uh, let's get started with this. Now, a few things to take into consideration today. Everybody is a little bit different. Everybody has a different level of mobility and experience and everybody's levers are different, meaning some people have long arms, short arms, long legs, short legs, etc. So, you know, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm talking today, apply it to yourself as you see fit, right? That's why I'm here. So when it comes to hand position, you know, bar position on our back, 
and head position. You know, I guess there's not a lot of information out there on the ideal position for these things, right? So I'm gonna break that down for you. Now I'm sure you've also heard of, you know, a high bar squat versus a low bar squat. Um, so I'm gonna talk about what the difference with that is as well. We'll also cover equipment. So things like wrist wraps, our belt, our footwear, things like knee sleeves versus knee wraps as well. So make sure you stick around for that. Now when it comes to our hand position on the bar, we're gonna start with that. So we'll come around the front. Now again, everybody's very different, right? Everybody has a different level of mobility. But the rule of thumb is, you wanna have your hands as close as mobility will allow. Why is this? Now, the closer that we can get our hands together on the barbell here, right? The more potential we have to squeeze and create a tighter upper back. Now, the upper back is the shelf for the barbell. So that's a very important factor in a squat, right? If you don't have a really strong, stable structure for the barbell to sit on, then you're already very limited, obviously, to what you're going to be able to squat. Okay, now, when it comes to high bar versus low bar squatting, the low bar squat is something you would typically see, you know, in powerlifting, in, in competitions. The barbell will typically sit a little bit lower on the back, more on the rear delts, whereas the high bar squat sits higher up on the trapezius muscle, okay? You'll see that squat more typically used by Olympic weightlifters, okay? Because it is more specific to what they do, okay? Where when they're doing a, let's say, a, a snatch or a clean and jerk, they're catching the barbell with a very, very upright torso position, okay? So, you know, a high bar squat requires a much more upright torso. But that doesn't mean you can particularly lift more weight. You'll see that most people I would say 95% of people have the potential and will lift more with a low bar position because you're now engaging the larger, bigger, stronger muscle groups, okay? More of the posterior chain. Now in saying that, just because you're using a low bar position and it's more posterior chain dominant, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna be able to utilize your quadriceps effectively. You absolutely can, but again, we have to tweak these movements a little bit to our levers and to our body. So, you know, what would be best for you? Well, if you're watching this video and you want to increase your squat instantly, I definitely recommend that you work on getting a low bar squat. Now, it can be an uncomfortable process, okay? It can be very uncomfortable on the shoulders and the elbows. So it will take time to obviously get used to that. Okay, so bear with it for a little bit. Um, it's meant to be uncomfortable. That's completely normal. And uh, when it comes to the head position on the squat, you have to think about, again, your body being like a chain, a connected chain, right? We wanna keep a, a neutral spine throughout the entire lift. Now, with a low bar squat, because it's loaded lower on our back, the, barbells, the, the, the barbell should sit along your rear delts, okay? So if you pull your elbows together behind your back and squeeze your shoulder blades together, you'll create like a shelf on the back of your rear delt. That's where the low bar position is and you'll see that in a moment when I demonstrate that for you but in regards to the head position again when we're low bar squatting we're required to sort of lean forward a little bit more because we need to keep that bar over the center of our gravity still so the lower the bar is down our body the further we have to lean forward to compensate right so with the head position what I think a good idea is is just to essentially match that so if you know I'm leaning here, I'm just keeping my head on the same angle. I'm not trying to keep my head back here and I'm not looking down at the ground. I'm keeping it very neutral, but in saying that, keep it tucked back a little bit, okay? We don't wanna be pushing our head forward or out. We want everything nice and compact. So I like to slightly tuck my chin as well. So that's for the head position, okay? So in terms of my hand position on a barbell, I don't have the greatest shoulders in the world. So I start generally a little bit wider with my hand grip. Uh, and then as I warm up, I slowly bring it in. Until my top set, I get into about here, okay? Now, I'm intentionally bringing my hands closer together each set because that's gonna allow me to potentially have a stronger, more stable upper back for the heavier weights that I plan on handling. So I hope that makes sense to you so far. What I'm gonna do is take a moment, I put my wrist wraps on and my belt, but I'm also gonna show you how to utilize your wrist wrap for a low bar squat because that's something you're gonna to need to do. It's gonna place a tremendous amount of pressure on your wrist 
So you're going to want to have some support there for that. So give me a moment, we'll set up and then we'll go through a demonstration and we'll just go over that first part so you can see it in action. Let's get it. All right guys, so we're gonna go through a, a demonstration now. There will be several demonstrations. Obviously the first part is gonna be focused on you just paying attention to obviously where on my back the bar is sitting, how I'm getting tight under the bar, um, and then obviously my head position during the squat. I'm just gonna do two or three repetitions. We're just using 185 kilograms today uh, for demonstration's sake. Um, yeah, just pay attention. And with the wrist wraps, guys, now, very similar to how we taught on the bench press, right? We need to stop the wrist from having this kind of movement. So there's no point just wrapping the wrist, sorry, wrapping the wrist wrap around your hand like that, right? You can still move. So we wanna make sure, again, that we're covering you know, our wrist joint over the, the top of the hand here, nice and firmly, and then wrapping down a little bit, right? Because we're trying to stop our wrist from rolling back too far, especially when you know, the bar's in a low bar position. You'll probably see the angle of my wrists. Keeping in mind, this is actually a very light weight for me, so you know, think about the fact that I do squat 400 kilos plus, um, you really do need to have something solid supporting your joints because we're not really built to be doing that kind of shit. And uh, I obviously wearing a belt. We're gonna go over how to use and brace the belt on the next part though. All right, so we'll set it up. So hand position. Again, I'm not too close right now. You know, I'm not, my shoulders are a little bit stiff at the moment, but as close as my mobility will allow. Now I'm actually using um, a hook grip of sorts or a claw grip. I put three fingers around the bar. So if you come around here and take a look, I put three fingers around the bar, my pinky finger goes under, and then I can crank down on it like this, okay? I do struggle with shoulder mobility, so if that's you and you have average shoulders, uh, this definitely alleviates a bit of pain compared to just putting your full hand around the bar and then trying to crank it back. So that's just a little uh, pro tip. All right. <sighs> Two to three, bro, I'll let you know. So we get in nice and tight, hands are set. Okay, routine every single time. Hands go into place, they don't move. We're cranking ourselves under the bar. So right now it's uncomfortable. All right, I'm squeezing down my back. Doesn't feel fantastic. And I'm digging it into my rear delts. It's in position, all right, now I'm setting my feet. Pay attention to the head position. Easy peasy. You know, so there's a quick demonstration of obviously how to get under the barbell properly, how to get tight, and then keeping in mind that as it gets heavier and heavier, that becomes more and more important, okay? So you've got to crank it in tighter and tighter to support the heavier loads. We'll take a minute. Uh, we might break that down quickly or summarize and then move on to the next part. Let's get it, baby. All right, guys, so I hope that made sense, okay? So obviously your hands need to come in as close as your mobility will allow. You really need to squeeze it down your back to create that shelf with your rear delts, okay? So it's like retracting and depressing your shoulder blades like you do on a bench press. That's how you're gonna create that nice big block in your upper back. But we'll go into that more with this bracing part as well. Okay, so bracing. This is one of the most misunderstood concepts, I think, when it comes to squatting and using a belt. Now, when we're using a belt with squats, with whatever lift, we're not just putting something around our, around our waist and hoping for the best, okay? Now, we use a belt, obviously, to support our core and to protect our lower back. But the way that the belt works isn't just by creating pressure around your lower back to keep it stable, okay? So the pressure is created with your, you know, with your abs. So it's called intra-abdominal pressure. Okay, so you're creating pressure from the inside of your core and you're expanding into the belt. So when you add, obviously, your big breath to fill your diaphragm and your brace, you contract into the belt to, again, create a block, a stable block 
And then you've got a, you know, your upper back's nice and tight. So now your torso is connected. It's a big block. And you want that when you're squatting because you don't want to have movement through your back, your upper back, or your lower back. We need it to be nice and tight, nice and stable. One, so we can shift more weight. And two, so we don't get fucked and hurt ourselves, right? Now, how do you brace with a belt? We'll go over this quickly before we uh, do a demonstration. Where you wear your belt is again, completely up to you. I'm not necessarily here to change these things for you. I'm just giving you, you know, my opinions and what I think will work. So for me, right, I've got my belt on. For me, it sits just under my rib cage. Okay, now when I'm taking a breath, when I'm squatting, and I'll put this into a demonstration for you, but it's about expanding through your stomach, not your chest. I'm not trying to go like this, right? So when the bar's on your back, if you're squatting and you go, and your, you know, your shoulders raise and your chest raises, you're not breathing efficiently. You're not gonna brace efficiently, okay? We need to try and keep our chest and shoulders down because remember, we're pulling down on the barbell, okay? We want to breathe in and expand our stomach through here. So we take a big gulp of air, it's like, all right, so we push out and then we pull down. Now, what do I mean by pull down? Your rib cage plays an extremely important part of this picture. Okay, so when we take our big breath into our belt, into our stomach, what we then want to do is we want to pull our rib cage down towards our pelvis. Okay, so think about this. You've got the bar on your back in a low bar position. Your upper back's nice and tight. Your head's in position, your eyes are where they need to be. I'm now gonna take my big breath into my stomach. And when I'm here, I'm now gonna brace everything from my upper back down to my rib cage into my belt. So it's squeeze down, pull down and brace. You will see this in a moment, it's very obvious because one of the biggest things I see, come around here for a moment. One of the biggest things that I see, all right, now around this way, come around this way, is when people are, are squatting, they're lining up to squat, right? They go, and they start to squat before they've actually locked in a brace. You need to lock in your brace, okay? It needs to be a definite, obvious thing. And I'm gonna demonstrate that when I do my squats. Now, if you've ever seen me squat before, you see my brace, it's very obvious, okay? And if you haven't got a brace locked in, you will know simply by fucking watching the video back of yourself. I'm gonna give you a little demonstration and we'll talk a little bit more about it. Okay, so again, wrist straps are important. Thinking about, you know, the first steps that we took because this is, you know, a chain. We're gonna put all these three things together at the end of this video to create, you know, what we wanna say is the perfect squat or at least a squat that's better than what you have now and it's gonna allow you to lift more weight instantly. Scotty boy, can you run the mono, please? All right. So we'll go over a quick check checklist of what I'm gonna do here. And I want you to pay attention and I want you to have a look at it. And I want you to ask yourself, do I do these things? The answer is no, well, do them. Okay, it's gonna help. So, hand position, belt on, belt done up. Hand position, okay, we're gonna do two more reps here. What I want you to focus on is my brace this time, how I'm squeezing down. You can see me pulling the barbell down into my back. I'm pulling my rib cage down and you will see a definitive brace before I descend into the squat, okay? I don't start my squat before I finish the brace. I lock it in as tight as I can because I know that I need to if I want to be successful with the squat. <sighs> Squeezing it down my back hard as I can. Set my feet. Big brace. Easy peasy. All right, so hopefully you can see my brace then, okay? As you can see, I was taking my time. I wasn't rushing. Yes, it's a lightweight, but when we're trying to learn how to do a perfect squat or to at least improve our squat, we need to think about quality. So if you're doing a set of three, 
or a set of eight. Break it down into three singles or eight singles. I'm not saying put the bar back on the rack after every set. What I'm saying is take your time between each rep. Focus on the little things, okay? Is my upper back tight? Take your big breath. Brace into your belt. Now, when you brace into your belt, you're pushing out the front of your stomach and your obliques. We're expanding outwards like a donut, okay? Into your belt to create that brace. You know, and then make sure you lock it in before you descend. We don't want to see, you know, the thing. We want... That's when you're fucking ready to squat, okay? Make sure you're doing that. If you're not, fucking pull your head out of your ass and do it. We'll take a minute, we'll come back, and we'll discuss what we're doing with our lower body, because this is also very fucking important. It's a squat, and we need to use our legs efficiently. Chat soon. All right, guys, and one more thing I'll add to that to summarize, okay? And it's also something else I quickly wanted to talk about is, you know, there are some very average cues. They're a little bit too general, and I don't think people quite understand what it means, and it can definitely hurt them, okay? And it'll link into, I guess, the next part as well. So one of the cues that you hear often with squats is chest up, chest up, chest up, big chest, okay? If you ask most people what that means, they'll go like this. My rib cage is now expanded. It's not pulling down, is it? We want the rib cage down, all right? So a better word, cue, to use might be strong chest. Does it make sense? Particularly, no, not really. Okay, but I think it's better than saying a big chest. Now, if you say strong back, strong chest, I would be more inclined to squeeze my back and my pecs and then push my rib cage down. You still want to keep a proud chest. We don't want to roll over, right? What the big chest is implying is that you're keeping your shoulder blades uh, retracted and depressed because that keeps you know, your chest out in a sense. It's not up, but it's out, okay? So strong chest, strong back. I think that's more applicable, okay? And now one more overused cue. I'm very guilty of using this cue in the past, but it's not a bad cue. You just need to explain to the lifter exactly what you mean by that, and that is knees out. Okay, so we'll go over knees out in a moment when we talk about um, our lower body and what we're doing. But I just wanted to summarize that. So, so far, I hope it makes sense. If you're watching, make sure you have liked this video, drop a comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. I also have my Patreon, uh, exclusive content on there weekly based around mindset, mentality, uh, and sharpening your mental tools to help you with whatever goals you have. You know, specifically, for us, I think it's the gym, right? So there's some things there that could be very helpful. I've had quite a few people jump on there this week, so thank you for your support. Uh, that is an excellent way to support the channel. And again, thank you to those who jumped on and signed up to the membership tier on YouTube. I appreciate you. You know, I love making these videos. I love giving you this information. And when you guys are supporting me like that, it allows me to commit more time to this because at the moment, it really is a full-time job making this content daily, editing, uploading, uh, keeping in mind, I also coach, I run a gym, um, you know, and I'm a busy guy, but I love doing this. So to you guys that support me, I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Now we'll get into the lower body. We'll stand out the front for this one, just while I kind of go over it with you, okay? So pretending I've got a barbell on my back. First thing, first thing I'll actually touch on, come back here, come back here. Knee wraps, knee sleeves, okay? Should you wear knee, uh, knee wraps? Yes, I think you should. If you're serious about being a power lifter at some point, you're gonna wanna put those knee wraps on because in competition, most of the time, you know, most of these federations, they're wrapped, you know, competitions and meets. Unless you're competing in the IPF or something like that, then uh, it's sleeves only, but you know, with some of the sleeves available today, they're uh, almost giving you just as much assistance as knee wraps. Um, now, if you would like a knee wrap tutorial, you know, a professional knee wrap tutorial, how I wrap my knees and how you know, some of the best squatters in the world wrap their knees, let me know and I'll make an entire video, obviously, on that because it is quite a, it's a technical thing, right? I'll teach you the ins and outs of wrapping knees, what knees, uh, sorry, what knee wraps to use, 
uh, how to utilize them in your training is in how far out of competition uh, in your training session, how early you should use them, how tight should they be, uh, and the different techniques you can use to do that. So if you want to hear that, you want to see that video, drop a comment and let me know. Now today I'm just wearing my sleeves and my footwear is very flat, okay? I definitely recommend uh, wearing a shoe where you can really feel the ground, okay? But that's nor here nor there, we'll go over that later. Now your stance, how wide you stand with a squat is very dependent on your hip mobility and your levers. I've adopted quite a narrow stance for my size. I have pretty decent mobility and I feel quite strong in that position, okay? Now some people, you know, if my stance is roughly here, I say shoulder width, maybe just inside of shoulder width. Some people squat really wide, okay? A lot of people squat really wide when they shouldn't know because they don't actually have the mobility to allow that. So what I want you to think about is, if you're squatting in a wide stance and you feel like you get quite a lot of pain through the front of your hips uh, and you can't quite reach depth, if those two things are happening, maybe consider bring your stance in a little bit closer. That could definitely be helpful, okay? Now, to tie this whole video off, we need to learn how to essentially, I don't know if bracing is the right word to use, but how to brace from the ground up, okay? It is the right word, fuck it. Now remember, everything starts from the floor and it goes up to our fingertips when we're lifting weights, right? So tension is created through the entire body. So with the floor, we need to think of actually aggressively gripping the floor with our toes, with our feet, creating somewhat of an anchor, okay, to create tension from. So what do I mean by that, Reese? Well, motherfuckers, what I mean is, when we're standing, you can do this while you're sitting or standing right now, okay? You want to think about actually pushing your big toes into the ground. Can you see my feet right now? Pushing your big toes into the ground, right? You got your pinky toe, like a claw, into the ground and your heel is digging in. Now I'm externally rotating, okay? If I didn't have grippy shoes on, my feet would do this. So I'm creating force by externally rotating, trying to spread the floor apart, creating tension, okay? Now I want to maintain this tension the entire duration of the squat. Come back up here now. So you've got your feet in the ground, creating that tension, okay, like a corkscrew. That's very important because if you don't have the tension from the ground, you're going to have a very hard time keeping tension throughout your body. Remember, everything is a chain and everything is connected. And if we have a weak link in that chain, well, it's not going to be as strong. That's just facts, right? So we need to make sure everything uh, has been addressed and covered. So you get your feet in the ground, what next? Okay, we're standing. Bars on our back, feet in the ground. Squeeze your glutes as hard as you can and flex your quads. I would say lock your knees, but I don't really want you to lock your knees. That's not what I'm trying to get you to do. I want you to flex your glutes, squeeze your quads and spread the floor at the same time. Do that right now, okay? You will feel your entire lower body is switched on. That is the tension that you want to get and maintain during the entire squat. Now that's difficult to do, okay? But if you can do that, I guarantee you, you're gonna feel very fucking powerful. It's a very powerful position. When everything is switched on and working together, it's crazy what you can actually achieve, right? So stop looking for uh, these little 1% things that you think are gonna help you. Focus on the basics as I always say. So bracing, learning how to brace correctly goes a long way. Now, how does that tie into the rest of the lift? Well, you've got to think about it, right? We're going to go over it from the ground up, and then we're going to do another demonstration, and we'll go from the top down. I'm going to make it very clear, very easy to understand. So we're here, big toes in the ground, pinky toe in the ground, heels in the floor, spreading the floor, okay? Creating tension like corkscrewing outwards. I'm flexing my quads, I'm squeezing my glutes, okay? Now my rib cage, I'm pulling it down to my pelvis. Rib cage down to pelvis, strong chest, okay? It's not out, it's strong, it's proud. I'm pulling my shoulder blades back together and down, okay? And now my head position looking straight, depending on the angle of your torso, it should be slightly forward, okay? That's from the ground up, what we wanna achieve and what we wanna focus on. I'll do a demonstration, we'll do one more demonstration and then we'll 
summarized that. We'll go over it one more time and we'll quickly touch on uh, equipment because I think there's a few more things we can talk about there. All right, Scotty boy, you get me again? And remember, when it comes to building a big squat, bench or deadlift, it is about repetitions, right? But not just aimless repetition. If you want to be good at something, you have to have the intention of trying to do it perfectly. Okay? I'm not saying you have to be perfect, because it won't always be perfect. But we always have to be trying to implement things that are going to help us improve and become better. Otherwise, you're going to stay the same, aren't you, Scotty? Correct. You're going to be a piece of shit for a longer period of time. And that's not ideal. All right, so wrist wraps on. My belt is on. Now we're going to go over the setup and we're gonna lock it all in, okay? We'll go three repetitions for this last set, Scotty. Nice and easy. Now, I'm not trying to move too fast today for you guys. Normally, I would move with a little more intensity and intent, but I want you to really be able to see what I'm doing so you can actually apply this yourself. All right, hands on the bar. Under we go. Squeeze it down our back. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. All right, now I'm setting my feet exactly where I want them. Okay. I'm gonna cork, as soon as I unrack the barbell, I'm gonna corkscrew the ground. I'm gonna brace everything in my body, take my big breath, squeeze, and do my squats. And every single repetition, I'm gonna get that brace, and I'm gonna squeeze. Now, one thing I will say, while that's fresh in your mind, is before when I was talking about knees out, the knees out cue is misleading and can be misleading. Let me show you why, okay? So, what people tend to think it means when they see knees out in the squat is they think that you just drive your knees out to the side as hard as you can. Like this, right? Now, whilst driving your knees out will allow you to keep a more upright torso position, if you're doing it the wrong way, you lose your grounding, okay? So you lose the ability to keep your big toe in the ground and to corkscrew. And you feel extremely unbalanced. So the knees out, I cue that by saying, squeeze your glutes, flex your quads, spread the floor. Now from that position, right, we are externally rotated. Our knees are technically driving out. And all I'm trying to do is maintain that tension and drive my knees kind of over my toes. Okay, that's not a bad thing. So it's there, right, and you can see my legs will shake a little bit. It's not shaking per se, it's just tension. I'm actually squeezing both in and out to maintain that stability and that grounding. Give me one minute. I've got one little hack for you that will actually help you apply that grounding instantly and uh, feel a lot stronger. Give me a minute and we'll chat and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. All right guys, so that basically really covers it all there. Now, I know there was probably a, a lot more detail in this than there was in the bench press and the deadlift, but keep in mind, the squat I would say is you know, a little more technical, right? So there's a few more things that we need to address and understand if we want to do it correctly. So I will wrap up and I will summarize it a little bit. There's a few more things that I really wanted to double down on. So, you know, I want you to be clear on, you know, the knees out situation. now. We want to avoid our knees caving in, okay? Now, if your knees cave in a little bit, all right, that's not the end of the world. It's not always a bad thing. Adductors, you know, a groin muscle, they have a job to do as well. Me personally, I have very strong adductors and they're a little overactive, okay? So I do tend to get my knees kick in just a little bit when I come out of the hole with a heavy squat. Now, what we really want to try and do is 
you know, minimize how much that happens. A little bit is okay, but if it becomes excessive, uh, obviously then that is technical breakdown, which isn't ideal, okay? So we still want to be able to maintain to the point of at least not letting our knees cave in, okay? So I like to think of pushing my knees over, let's say, my little toe on the outside, okay? So they're still driving outward slightly, but I'm not just aimlessly trying to drive my knees out as far as I can, um, to the point where I can maintain that tension, as I said, through the floor with the corkscrew. Because if you start trying to drive your knees out too aggressively, you lose your grounding and stuff like that. There's one more thing, if you hold there one moment, right? I nearly forgot. This is an extremely effective tool when it comes to learning how to ground yourself for the squat with your feet. Now, just a basic hip circle bend, right? What you wanna do is simply stand in it and you're gonna put it on your mid shin, just above your ankles. I'm not gonna fucking do it right now, but put it around your mid shin. I know you see people do banded work with it around their knees. Now, that's not what we're trying to achieve. We're not trying to you know, achieve what someone will be doing by doing that. What we're trying to achieve is the ability to feel the floor more. And if you put a band on like that, a medium, medium firmness uh, around your shin, get into your squat position, and you will literally be able to feel your big toe actually doing its job and anchoring you to the ground. Okay, it's gonna have to do that now because there's inward pressure on your leg. So it's like a, uh, a physical cue that you can actually use and it's an excellent tool to utilize. You know, just like we need to utilize, as I said, knee wraps at some point. Now, if you want that knee wrap video, let me know and I'll show you how we wrap knees properly. Now, this is my wrap of choice. Death Grip, these are a wrap that I actually made five years ago. I had them produced. Now, I would like to actually keep making wraps and the sleeves. I've never done uh, sleeves before. So if you'd be interested in uh, you know, grabbing some wraps and sleeves, let me know, because I'm gonna look into getting them made. We get some cult strength ones. Uh, but you know, thank you for watching today. As I said, if you can implement at least some of these things into your squat, if you're not doing them currently, you are instantly gonna feel stronger. Okay, so when it comes to your bracing in the upper back, if you've been squatting without a braced upper back and you start bracing, the bar's gonna feel lighter on your back. If you haven't been bracing your midsection correctly, you're not utilizing your belt correctly, the moment you start doing that, instantly you're gonna feel stronger. Okay, and if you have no idea what you're supposed to do with your legs and you just aimlessly squat up and down, that's not gonna be great, is it? So the moment you actually figure out what you're doing, you're gonna feel like a new person squatting. You're gonna feel like you can actually use your legs, like you can actually push that weight effectively. Okay, because a lot of the time, I think people feel like when they're squatting, that weight's taking them down. And that's not how it should be. You're taking that fucking weight down and you're standing it up, okay? You better show it who's boss. And what I mean by that is brace effectively. Look strong with a barbell on your back. Look confident with a barbell on your back. Okay, and build some big legs and build a big squat. Anyway, thanks for watching, you know. Make sure you share it if you found it useful. Please drop a comment. Let me know how you found it. Uh, much more content coming out this week. Unfortunately, it's uh, really bad weather here at the moment. There's potential that the gym won't be open tomorrow because of flooding. And if it's not, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get a video up because I've got to film it, but I'll try and find a way. Don't you worry about that. But until next time, you know what to do. Go to the fucking gym. Let's get it.